So today's lesson is on polynomial division. So we're gonna learn how to divide polynomials by each other. So before I go on, I'm going to review basically the notation of division. So if I want to divide a number, say four divided by two, I can note it like this, four divided by two, or I could do four divided by two, because a fraction is basically division, or I can do it like this, four, four divided by two, where our dividend is here, which is the number that we're dividing, and our divisor is the number that we're dividing it into. So now in division, the answer for a division problem is called the quotient. So here we have our dividend, here we have our divisor, and then here we have our quotient. So those are the parts of a division problem. So let's go ahead and start our polynomial division. So very similarly to what we were doing before, note that if I have f divided by g of x, this is going to equal f of x divided by g of x. So you can break those down much the same way that we did with addition and subtraction. So let's go ahead and see what we would do. So for example, if I had, say, 2x squared over x, that would equal 2x, okay? In the same way, I could do this. If I had x divided by 7x to the fourth, x goes into 7x to the fourth, 7x to the third times. So it's, so it's a very similar, and depending on what we're doing, the notation is different. So again, let me go back up here again. Notice, these are all the same things. The only difference here is the notation. So let's just go ahead and review one more time. The dividend is the thing that we are dividing. So it is the term or number that we are dividing. And the divisor is the term or number that we are dividing by. So that's how we do it. So before we go on, I want to review long division and how that works. I know it's been many years since many of you have probably seen that. So let's go ahead and just do a very fast review. So I am going to review how we do long division. So first thing we're gonna do is write our problem. And with long division, you usually use this notation. So if I have this number, and I'm gonna divide it by, say, 25. What I'm gonna do is pick the first two numbers or the first numbers that 25 will go into. So in this case, notice 25 goes into my number 73, which is the first two numbers. So if I divide 73 by 25, I'll get two, which is the first integer, the first number that it goes into. I then multiply two times 25, and that gives me 50. So I put 50 down here. Now I subtract seven, or th three minus zero is three. Seven minus two is 23. So now notice, I now have down here 23. I then bring down this four, and now I say, how many times or does 25 go into 234? Or if I divide 234 by 25, what's the integer that I have? So 234 divided by 25 is nine point something. So up here, I'm gonna put nine. Then I do nine times 25, which is gonna be 225, and I put that down here. 
I then subtract 234 from 225, and notice I get 9. And now I bring down this 5, and I'm going to say, how many times does 25 go into 95? And our closest integer for that is going to be 3. So now I do 3 times 25 is 75. I subtract 0 and 20. Now notice, I have now, I'm at the end of my number. I have 293 with a remainder of 20. So there's a couple of different ways that we do this. So here's how we show remainder. And usually it would be 293 with 20, and then we put it over this number, 25. So our answer is 293, 20 over 25. And of course, we're going to reduce that fraction. So that's going to equal 293 and 4 fifths. Now, a different way that you can show it also is you'll see these done like this. 293 R for remainder of 4 fifths. So that's a different notation that you sometimes see. And then, of course, if it's a word problem, usually you would do it as a decimal, so that could be 293.8. So it's all these different ways to represent an answer. Usually I like to see it as a, as a fraction. You'll also see it like this, 293 with a remainder of 4. So it really depends on the context, but I would say the majority of the times you do the answer like this. And for the polynomial division that we're doing, we're going to do the answer like this, where the remainder is going to be the number that's left over, over our divisor. Okay, so now I'm going to work an example. And the example I'm going to work is this example. It's x cubed plus 5x minus 28 divided by x minus 3. Now notice I'm missing an x squared term here. So when I actually write the problem to divide it, I'm going to include a 0x squared term as a placeholder, which you need to do all the time as it makes the problem work uh, correctly. So let's go ahead and rewrite this using this notation. So I have x cubed plus 0x squared plus 5x minus 28. Now again, you always want to have all of your exponents in the polynomial present. So if there's any missing, you'll fill it in with a coefficient of 0. And then I put my x minus 3 here. So similarly to what we did before, notice I have my x minus 3 and my terms. So when I divide these, the only thing that's different is all I'm going to really focus on in my actual division is the first term of my divisor, in this case, x. So what I'm going to look at is say, okay, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and divide this by this. So x to the third divided by x is equal to x squared. And then, like in my long division, I'm now going to multiply the x squared by this entire term. So notice I'm going to do x squared times x is going to be x cubed, and then x squared my, times negative 3, or minus 3, x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. Now notice, you will always have the terms that you multiply under the like terms above. So notice my x cubes over my x cubed and so forth. So 0 minus, I subtract the bottom from the top, 0 minus 3x squared is going to be positive 3x squared because minus a negative is a positive. And then the same way that I brought down the term or the, or the number in long division, I'm going to now bring this down. So it's plus 5x. So now I'm going to go ahead and say 
3x squared, which is here, divided by x is going to be simply plus 3x. And now I multiply my plus 3x times this whole term. So plus 3x times x is 3x squared. Plus 3x times negative 3 is minus 9x. I then subtract, and I'm left with 5 minus negative 9x is 14x. Now I repeat the same thing again. I bring down my minus 28 from here. So it's minus 28. And I say, okay, 14x divided by that x gives me 14. Now I multiply it through again. Times, well, 14 times x is 14x. 14 times 3 is going to be negative 42, because it's a negative. And I subtract the top from the bottom, and I get negative 28 minus 42 is going to be 14. And notice that nothing else, there's no x's to go into 14, so that winds up being my remainder. So my actual final answer is going to be this, plus 14 over x minus 3. So, my, so that's my final answer. And we'd write it as x squared plus 3x plus 14 plus 14 over x minus 3, which is, again, my divisor. And that's my final answer. So a couple of things to notice. When you bring down and multiply this term by this, what's going to happen is that the leading term is going to always cancel. And if it doesn't do that, that means you multiplied incorrectly. So that will always cancel out when you do the multiplication of the term by the divisor. So that's an example of how we do long division. So what I'm going to do now is work a couple of examples of long division. So let's first look at this problem. 15x squared plus 8x minus 12. So it looks like all of our exponents are here. So let's go ahead and draw that in, or write that in. And I have 15x squared plus 8x minus 12. And then over here, I'm going to put my 3x plus 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide my 15x squared divided by 3x, and that's going to give me 5x. So now I'm going to multiply 5x times 3x plus 1, which gives me 15x squared, and then 5x times plus 1 is plus 5x, and I'll draw my line. And then 8x minus 5x is 3x. I bring down the 12, so the minus 12 from here. And now I divide 3x. I divide this 3x by this 3x. So 3x divided by 3x is going to be plus 1. And... So now I multiply 1 times 3x plus 1, which is going to be 3x plus 1. And then I have negative 12 minus 1 is minus 13. And notice I can't put any more x's into 13, so that's my remainder. And again, that's the symbol. This is the symbol that you put for your remainder. And so my final answer is going to be and again, up here I can put on here, you know, r3x plus 1. But with polynomials, I'm gonna, I want the answer to look like this. 5x plus 1 minus 
13 over our divisor, which is 3x plus 1. And that's how you do that. Let's get and do another one. Now, notice before we get started, we're missing a exponent, and we're missing the x squared term. So what we're going to do is write this in, x to the fourth minus 3x to the third minus 0x squared minus 7x minus 14. And then we'll put our divisor over here, and then we can get started. So the first thing we're going to do is x to the fourth divided by x is going to be x to the third. We then multiply x to the third by our divisor, which gives us x to the fourth minus 4x cubed, and we draw our line. And x to the fourth x minus x to the fourth is zero. Negative 3x cubed minus negative 4x cubed is just going to be positive x cubed. And now we continue. So I'm going to bring down my zero x squared from here. And now we're going to go ahead and divide x cubed into our x. And so x cubed divided by x is going to be plus x squared. And then we continue our process. So x squared times x is going to be x cubed. Negative 4 times x squared is minus 4x squared. And now we subtract. So 0 minus negative 4x squared is positive 4x squared. And then we're going to go ahead and bring down this negative 7x. And we continue the process. So 4x squared divided by x is simply going to be plus 4x. We, now we multiply, so 4x times x minus 4 is 4x squared, and then 4x times negative 4 is negative 16x, and we continue to subtract. So again, 4x squared minus 4x squared, that cancels. Negative 7x minus negative 16x is going to be, in this case, positive 9x. And then we now bring down our negative 14. And now we divide 9x by x. So that's going to equal plus 9. So we're dividing this by this, which gives us our plus 9. And now we multiply it through. So I'm going to multiply this times this, and I get 9x minus 36, and I subtract those, and I get positive 22, and that's our remainder. So our final answer is going to be this, plus 22 over x minus 4. And if you want to write that out, you can, and that's your answer. So another technique to do division with polynomials is called synthetic division. And synthetic division is a very fast way to do division. 
as you can see, long division can take some time. It's a little bit um, ponderous. Um, but given the right uh, set of equations and polynomials, you can use synthetic division. So the key to synthetic division is that your divisor is a single degree binomial. Well, what's single degree binomial mean? Well, single degree means it can only be x to the first. You can't have x squared, or x to the third. It has to be x to the first. And it has to be a binomial, which is just a two-term polynomial. So that's the rule. You can't use synthetic division if your divisor is anything else. But if it is, this is a really nice way of doing division. So let's go ahead and do a demonstration of synthetic division. 3x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 7x squared minus 3x plus 4. And we'll divide that by x minus 2. So the first thing with synthetic division is our division symbol looks like this. Our notation looks like this. And what we do is we just put the coefficients of our terms in our division symbol. So I'm going to put 3. The coefficient of my cube term is 1 negative 7, negative 3, and 4. So again, notice that this is this, this term is that, that is that number, that number, that number, and this number. So those are our numbers inside of our synthetic division. So now one thing also we have to notice is this. This is x minus 2. So the assumption with synthetic division is that my binomial is x minus something. So in this case, it's x minus 2. So we put a 2 here. If this had been x plus 2, you would say that that's going to be x minus negative 2. So that would be negative 2. But in this case, notice it's x minus 2. So we put a 2 there. So the next step to synthetic division is we bring this 3 down to here. Now we do 2 times 3. So I'm going to do 2 times 3. And that's going to equal 6. So, this, so notice I put my 6 1 over. I put it up here. Now I add these together. 1 plus 6 is 7. Now I do 2 times 7, that equals 14, so I put that right here. I now add these two numbers, so that's going to be negative 7 plus 14 is 7. I now do or 2 times 7 again which is 14. I now add these two together. So negative 3 plus 14 is 11. And now I do 2 times 11, which is 22. So I put my 22 here. And that's going to equal, I add 4 and 22 is 26, which is going to always be, be my remainder. So this last term is my remainder. So now what I'm going to do is notice how my highest term in here in this original problem was x to the fourth. So what I do is I go one down on that. So this is going to be 3x to the third plus 7 x squared plus 7x plus 11 plus 
26 over my divisor, which is right here. So it's over x minus 2. And that's it. So you can see that's pretty easy. It's a much easier way to solve these problems than using long division. So those of you who are saying, I wonder what he's going to do on a test. Well, I'm going to probably have you do one or two long division problems, and then I'll allow you to do it any way you want to. Or I'll probably ask you to do a couple with synthetic division. But uh, for the most part, if you have a problem, say, for example, on an SAT where you cannot use a calculator, synthetic division is the way to go. Because once you practice this a few times, you can literally knock out these problems in like 30 seconds. So I would encourage you to really learn and practice synthetic division. So now I'm going to go ahead and work some examples. So notice in this problem, we have a term that is missing. In, in this case, it's the x squared term. So we have to use a placeholder. So let's go ahead and draw our synthetic division sign, or symbol, or notation, and fill in our coefficient. So the coefficient of x to the fourth is 1, of x cubed is negative 2, of x squared is 0, of 3x is 3, and our constant is plus 1. So notice here it's x minus 3, so I put a 3 here. Now I'm going to bring down my 1, and now I'm going to do 3 times 1, is 3. I add those together, so negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. I put that here. 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So I put the 9 here. 3 plus 9 is 12. And now 3 times 12 is 36. 1 plus 36 is 37. And now I simply write my polynomial out. So my highest degree here is 4. So I'm going to use degree 3 for my answer. So it's 1 times x to the third plus 1 times x to the second, or just x to the second, plus 3x to the first, or 3x, plus 12, plus 37 over x minus 3. And again, that x minus 3 came from our divisor. So our next problem, notice that this is x plus 1 half. So because it's x plus 1 half, which is the same as x minus negative 1 half, we're going to put a minus 1 half here. And now we'll fill in our dividend. So the coefficient of x squared is 4 of x to the first is negative 12, and of 9 is just plus 9. Now, one thing I think you'll find also is that when dividing by a fractional polynomial, synthetic division is much easier. So I'm going to bring down my 4. Now I have negative 1 half times 4 is going to be negative 2. Negative 12 plus negative 2 is negative 14. And now negative 1 half times negative 14 is positive 7. So 9 plus 7 is going to be 16. And again, our last term is our remainder. So now I take 1 
exponent less than R2, so it's going to be 4x minus 14 plus 16 over x plus 1 half. And that's our answer. So as you can see, it's pretty quick. And let's go ahead and do another one. So we'll set up our symbol like this. Notice this is already minus one third, so I just put a one third here. And now I have to put in my terms, my coefficients. So x squared is three, nine x is gonna be nine, and our constant's minus two. I bring down my three, one third times three is one. Nine plus one is 10. One third times 10 is 10 thirds. And 10 thirds plus negative two, which is six thirds, is going to be four thirds. And now we use one less of a degree. So that's going to be 3x plus 10 plus 4 over 3 over x minus 1 third, or that winds up being, because we have to actually simplify that, obviously. So this winds up being 3x plus 10 plus 4 over 3 times x minus 1 third. And then we just distribute that. So it's 3x plus 10 plus 4 over 3x minus 1. And that's 3x minus 1 because 3 times x minus 1 third winds up being 3x minus 3 times 1 third, which is 3x minus 1. So this is our answer. So let's now go ahead and try another problem. This problem is a little different. So let's look at the problem and see, notice the dividend. It is not in standard form. So our dividends should always be in standard form. So we'll have to change that. Plus, look at the divisor. Notice it's 2x plus 1, and our divisors have to be in some form of x minus some number. So both of those have to change. So let's first put this dividend in standard form. So that's going to be negative 8 x to the fourth plus 16x squared plus 9x minus 10. Notice that we have a missing term. Our x cubed term is missing. So let's go ahead and put a placeholder in. You must have placeholders or this will not work. 8x to the fourth plus 0x cubed plus 16x squared plus 9x minus 10. So now our equation is not correct. So now let's go over to the divisor. Notice that our divisor is 2x plus 1. So again, that cannot be the case. We have to make that x plus something. So let's go ahead and write this down. So this is 2x plus 1. So in order to make that 2x and x, we're going to divide it by 2. So we have to divide the entire problem by 2. So I'll divide the divisor by 2, and I'm going to divide the dividend by 2. So now we have our new equation is going to be negative 4x to the 4th plus 
x to the third plus 8 x squared plus 9 halves x minus 5 divided by x plus 1 half. So notice, as you recall, in order for this to work, that has to be x minus some number. So we'll go ahead and just, we can make that x minus negative 1 half, which is x plus 1 half. So now we know that our number that we'll use in synthetic division is going to be negative 1 half. So now we'll start our synthetic division process. So I'll draw my synthetic division symbol. And I'll put in my numbers. So I have negative 4, 0, 8, 9 halves, and negative 5. I'll bring down my negative 4. And now for my divisor, I'm going to put in negative 1 half. So negative 1 half times negative 4 is 2. 0 plus 2 is 2. Negative 1 half times 2 is going to be negative 1. 8 plus negative 1 is going to be 7. Negative 1 half times 7 is going to be negative 7 halves. 9 halves plus negative 7 halves is positive 2 halves, which is just going to be 1. Negative 1 half times 1 is just negative 1 half. Negative 5 plus negative 1 half is negative 5 and a half, or negative 11 halves. And now we go ahead and fill it in. So notice our highest order term is x to the fourth. So we start with one less. So the answer is going to be negative 4 x to the third plus 2 x squared plus 7x plus 1 minus 11 over 2 over our divisor, which is x plus 1 half. Now, if you look at our remainder, that doesn't really look right. We have a fraction over some stuff, and we have to really make that uh, rationalized and look better than that. So how we're going to do that is by doing this. I'm going to take my negative 11 over, and I'm going to drop this denominator into the main denominator, which I can do. So that's 2 times x plus 1 half. So when I distribute that 2, that's going to equal negative 11 over 2x plus 1. So that's actually this in a better form. So now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my answer in that form. So my final answer in the correct form is negative 4 x cubed plus 2x squared plus 7x plus 1 minus 11 over 2x plus 1. And that is my final answer. So for our last topic in this section, we're going to talk about synthetic substitution. Well, what's synthetic substitution? Well, if I asked you to evaluate this function at one half, it would be very time consuming to actually plug this into your calculator. And the chances are you would make a mistake because there's a lot of stuff here that you have to do to actually plug it in, okay? 
And that's going to take you probably some time. Well, one thing we can do is do something called synthetic substitution. And basically what synthetic substitution means is when I divide this using, using synthetic division or even long division, the remainder is what the value is plugged in with this one half. So let's go ahead and do an example. So I'm going to go ahead and x equals one half. So it's, I'm going to put one half here and then I'll do my numbers for synthetic division, my coefficients. Bring my two down, one half times two is going to be one. Negative three plus one is negative two. One half times negative two is negative one. Two times ne two plus negative one is one. One half times one is one half. And four plus one half, that's going to give me nine halves because four is eight halves. And then one half times nine halves is just nine fourths. So I'm going to go ahead and put nine fourths here. Now negative 10 is the same as negative 40 over four. So negative 40 over four plus nine over four is negative 31 over four. That's my remainder. So f of one half for this function equals negative 31 over four. So you can see how much time you save by doing it by hand with synthetic division versus plugging it into a calculator. Plus the potential for making mistakes goes down, I believe, with synthetic division. So let's go ahead and work some problems. So in this case here, notice it says use synthetic substitution to evaluate the polynomial at the given value. So the given value here you can see is x plus 4. Well, we know x plus 4, it's basically a factor, so we do x plus 4 equals 0, or x equals negative 4. Okay, so you can look at it like that, or you can just say, oh yeah, this is x plus 4, so it has to be a negative 4 in our synthetic division operation. So we put the negative 4 here, and we put our coefficients. So we have 2 for x to the fourth, 8 x to the third. Notice we're missing an x squared, so that's 0. Then we have 2 for x to the 1, and then our 8. Bring down my 2. So I have negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. 8 plus negative 8 is 0. Negative 4 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 4 times 0 is 0. So 2 plus 0 is 2. And negative 4, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So notice our remainder is 0. So, when, so P I guess of x plus 4 equals 0. And then, of course, we can go down here. Notice now we have x equals negative 1 half. So when it's equals, we just put the actual number in front. So if x equals negative 1 half, we just put the negative 1 half here. Again, we put our coefficients for 2. We have 0 for our x squared three and five. Be very careful when you get a missing term, make sure you put the placeholder in. Bring the four down, negative one half times four is negative two. We add those together, we get zero. Negative one half times zero is simply zero again. Zero plus zero is zero. Negative one half times zero is zero. 
3 plus 0 is 3, negative 1 half, times 3 is negative 3 halves, 5 is simply 10 over 2, so 10 halves plus negative 3 halves is 7 halves, which is our remainder. So p of negative 1 half for this equation equals 7 halves. Again, see how fast that is compared to even plugging it into your calculator. So that is our entire lesson. I will put these notes up uh, on Canvas so you can download them. They will be with the video and I'll also put them in the announcements. So if you have any questions, I will be in early on Monday for extra help and I'll be after school on Monday also for extra help.